Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Reboot, Reflect, Revive, Self-Esteem in a Selfie World. Today, we are going to start with uh, somebody very young, very interesting and dynamic. And on my show, on my YouTube channel, I usually invite many interesting people to share about their experiences in with issues related to self-esteem. So today, I'm very pleased to welcome Avinash Sojnani. He's born and raised in Hong Kong. He currently works for a private capital advisory firm as a VP, and he co-heads in Japan, Southeast Asia, as well as Australia. Before that, he studied economics, finance, international business at Oxford Brookes University, and he is quite active in tennis, table tennis, body weight training. That's very fascinating and interesting, Avinash. So first of all, I'd just like to say welcome and thank you for being here. And I'm just going to say, share a little bit of a research that I discovered about your generation, Generation Z, which they generally call Gen Zs, who are between the ages of 16 to 25 year olds. And research shows that they have a far healthier relationship with the media and since they are digital natives, because they grew up shaped by technology and internet is an integral part of their daily lives. So according to research, it shares that your age group have a, a capacity and a capability uh, to understand social media, to use it more as a tool rather than to allow it to become addictive. Um, is that correct, Avinash? What do you think about that? Um, I think um, to that statement, yes, social media was definitely created to be used as a tool. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs in our society today, typically Generation Z or even out of Generation Z, mm -hmm. they're definitely utilizing platforms, social medias, Instagram, for as tools. And the, the, the specific tool is to reach people at scale to deliver uh, what people need and if it's difficult to get, and they're delivering that at scale. And I feel like that's what social media can offer you. But at the same time, it can also offer some negative, um, negative things. Uh, and that leads to the addiction part. Um, so there's, it's really how you look at it. What is your mindset going into it? But uh, it, you, can, you can get both sides in my opinion. That's true. That's true. So in your experience, uh, maybe while um, in university or in school, have you experienced uh, a certain sense of self-doubt uh, when, uh, or, or, you know, like your self-esteem was kind of deeply affected at certain points in your life, maybe in your teen years or much younger in childhood? Yeah. Uh, I think definitely um, when it kind of a similar story to what you have in the book, actually, when I was young, I feel not, I feel I, I was quite overweight and there was bullying around that. And um, also comments from the teachers saying to my parents saying, you know, your, your son is overweight and, you know, just like going through life like that, it kind of threw me into a place where I, I got a little depressed and, I wasn't happy about myself. I wasn't happy about my body. I wasn't happy that because maybe of my body, I didn't have as many friends. I wasn't seen as a popular kid because, mm. you know, the popular kid was seen as sporty, fit, good looking. Um, so yeah, that definitely affected me. Um, so I do have that story. Would you like me <clears throat> to talk a little bit about um, yes. how I kind of came out of that? Yes, I think that's very helpful. Do sure, I think, I think one thing that really helped me come out of, you know, this rut where I'm feeling really self-conscious, not good enough, is remembering this quote. Uh, my mom used to share it, and I, thought, I read it in the book as well. Um, you have to love yourself before you can love others. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've always had this desire to help people and do things, but you can't really help people if you don't help yourself first. Mm -hmm. So I kind of made that my fundamental focus on tackling, you know, this issue with self-esteem. 
And then I, I started to realize that I should care about more about how I feel and what I think rather than what other people think about me. And I think that's what really catapulted me out of this rut of feeling like I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. um, just remembering why, why do I feel good and what makes me feel good? And then just following that path rather than looking on Instagram and saying, oh, I want to be like this bodybuilder mm -hmm. and then breaking my body in the gym and I don't even feel good just to look that way. So I think that's important to realize. It's not about how you look and what you know other people think. It's about how you feel. You know, and that's what really helped me start to feel better about myself. And uh, I feel pretty good now. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You're looking good yeah. too. And you're all, I mean, you're, you're in a good job and a uh, well positioned. Uh, how do you feel that uh, if, if you were to give advice to certain young people who are probably going through certain issues relate similar to what you've been through? Uh, since you've experienced it, what, what advice would you give them right now? Like, how should they deal with it when, as they are going through it? I think um, it's important to remember, um, you know, always, always check in when, with yourself. What, what I mean by that is always check in with how you're feeling right now. Um, you know, what do you want to achieve kind of moving forward um, and really be in tune with yourself when you're in tune with yourself, this is really going to block all the externalities of people saying, Oh, you're not good enough. You're not this, you're not that or, and why that's important. And this, you touch on this in the book is a lot of bullies around. Yeah. They're bullies because they're feeling the same emotions and that is their way to, you know, latch out at people. And in order to overcome that bullying and externalities, it's important to listen to yourself. What is important to you? How do you feel? What makes you feel good? Mm -hmm. And that will kind of block out all the nonsense around you and really follow what you feel is true to yourself. And I can, I can tell you, if you follow that path, the the trees you grow will really bear fruit and you're going to feel really good moving forward um so just listen to yourself and follow what makes you feel good that's that's my advice that that's very helpful and that's so true for somebody so young to have that kind of wisdom i'm not stereotyping i'm just saying that it is good that you analyzed all of this through your experiences so you can share it uh, the the interesting part is when you sh when you said uh, about um, bullies and it is true that bullies themselves are actually going through their own personal self esteem issues according to research and uh, it's just that bullies tend to hide it and take advantage of people who are a bit vulnerable or weak now if if that happens online there is no clear boundary online like people have these clicks and likes and and comments um, because they are not visible face to face they tend to be a bit more aggressive with their language do you think that's happening now 100% um fully um you know when you're behind a screen it's like your ego goes from here to here and mm -hmm. you have infinite power almost you can do what you want that can be a dangerous thing. And I kind of went through a similar experience actually um, when I was in high school, um, you know, having a little bit of an online argument with a friend. And then behind the screen, you have so much power. You feel you can say what you want to say. True. But then eventually reality will hit. And that's what happened to me as, you know, had a couple of exchanges online, not positive, not, not very nice things. Mm -hmm. and um i had to this was with another fellow in in my school so essentially the next day i had to face the consequences and you know after saying these things i was dwelling on it oh, oh yeah. no i made a mistake now i have to face the consequences and due to that i actually missed school for about two to three days because i was too afraid to face the consequences anyways i ended up in school we had a little bit of a wrestle and then shook hands. But okay. moral of the story, 
moral of the story, yes. It's so easy to get carried away on social media. Mm-hmm. And I think with that, it's it's really important. I, I heard this from a guy. It's, it's, a, it's a nice quote I like to hear. Don't post online what you wouldn't in person. That doesn't just, it, it can go for online bullying, but even if it's career related, if you're not passionate about something and you're you're just posting because it's a trend, if you, if you wouldn't talk about it in, in real life, I, you shouldn't post it. Otherwise, then you're just posting content to, because of what other people want. You should be posting content on what you want. Mm-hmm. And why that's important is if you follow someone else, that can also affect your self-esteem when, when they stop watching you, for instance. Mm. Um, that's another tangent, but moral of the story, yeah, it's, it's really easy to get carried away on social media. Mm-hmm. So let's, uh, okay, that's about social media, but what about interactions nowadays with individuals, uh, whether it's in the workplace or in relationships, uh, even the relationship dynamics with uh, the older generation, uh, in terms of self-esteem, how do you feel that uh, if supposing I was to give you advice as say your mother's age group and I give you advice, and I say, uh, Avinash, don't do this, do that. It's uh, it's not right. Don't talk like this. Don't behave like this. Um, how how do you take it? How would you take that? <laughs> I think um, it depends what age I'm in. If, if I'm growing up and I'm young, I'm not going to take it well. Eventually, I'm going to feel like I want to rebel. Okay. You know, if, if somebody says, don't do this, don't do that you'll want to do it, right? Naturally, mm-hmm. as a child, you're curious. I guess as you're older, it kind of feels like somebody's telling you what to do. Mm. Um, and it can really hamper, I guess, if, you know, we related to self-esteem. It can hamper your self-esteem because somebody's preventing you from doing what you want to do, what's natural to you. And they're almost subliminally, like passively saying, you know, your natural self is not good enough. Mm. You have to do, you know, you have to be better. It's passively, yeah. they're, they're, they're mm. kind of saying that. Um, but that's kind of how I would react. Um, yeah. So is, you feel that um, your experiences have helped you develop your self-esteem. Uh, what kind of experiences would you say um, that you would advise others in terms of say your age group um, to encourage them to look outside social media and find quality relationships or activities or something that they can do to develop. I have, a, I have a couple of um, examples. I can share a few personal stories. Um, so one is I, I definitely got sucked into the, the phase of Instagram. I was, I was working in Singapore mm-hmm when I kind of got hit by this um, realization, um, you know, I'm trying to do work, but then every five minutes, I just catch myself scrolling on Instagram. And I realized that over the last couple of years, this became very unconscious to me. It was unconscious behavior Mm. where like, you know, I'm, I'm doing something. And then eventually five minutes later, I'm like, I catch myself on Instagram. And this was also a phase where I was kind of sucked into it, where, you know, you see a lot of models and bodybuilders and people doing fun things as well. Mm -hmm. And then it just like, you know, you're looking at people's stories and it affects you. You're like, oh, I wish I was doing that. You know, I wish I was. And, you know, you watch these things to kind of chase that, to be like, oh, they're in a a much better place than me. I want to be there. Yeah. Um, But then when when I came to the realization, it it was unconscious behavior. I said, you know what, this is a problem. Mm-hmm. I need to address this problem. So I decided to delete Instagram for four months and I didn't touch it in that four months. That changed my whole perspective. Um, because in the moments where I would want to scroll, I'm thinking I don't have the app to go to. And then eventually I, I would be in my thoughts with myself and I would do something more productive, you know, mm-hmm. rather than mindlessly be on something and not thinking about my thoughts Mm -hmm. so that helped me really develop awareness Mm -hmm. leading instagram yeah um so i recommend that i recommend that to anyone who falls into a pit where they're just like they feel like they're sucked into instagram Mm -hmm. remove it deactivate your account just for a little bit 
Mm. Um, and then another story is actually a dating, dating related story because we're Gen Z. I'm, I'm sure like majority of Gen Zs have Tinder, Bumble or something. And so what happened with me is, you know, I'm, I'm on these apps and because I'm on these apps, when I'm in person, maybe in a bar or in a social scenario, I would be a little bit timid because I'm like, I don't need to put an effort to talk to other people. I can just mm. go home and go on the apps and swipe and then talk to someone. Yeah. But then eventually, you know, after a couple of experiences, I decided, you know what, I'm going to delete the apps. And then the moment I started putting myself out there in, in, in the clubs and bars, I no longer had that app to say, you know what, I don't need to talk to that person. So then when you're in that moment, it, it just encouraged me, you know what, just approach and talk. Yeah, it takes courage, though, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, you do need that kind of it takes courage. courage yeah. It takes courage, but when, you know, when you don't have the apps, it motivates you to just mm. get out of your comfort zone and do it. Mm -hmm. And then that also changes your you know, perception. It changed it for me that it's so much better it's so much better having it in real life rather than on technology where it's yeah you're, yeah. you're basing it basing it on the appearance of someone not even about their personality you haven't met them correct you're purely judging them by their appearance yeah um so that is my advice you know if, you, if you're uh, sucked into instagram delete it and if you're sucked into the dating apps delete it experience life and be mm -hmm. present Mm -hmm. um it's so much better <laughs> that's that, that, that's that is so empowering and it's from. i think it takes it does take courage and, okay. and i admire you for that i mean for taking stock of what's happening to you and why it's happening and then being able to address it and deal with it you know like because uh honestly once you're like you said when you when you get sucked into it and you are constantly um, needing that sort of validation, that external validation, whether it's social media, and then you kind of depend on it. So when you are rooted within yourself, like you like yourself the way you are, you, you know you have weaknesses, you know you have strengths. And when you develop your strengths, your weaknesses automatically get addressed as well. So I, I commend you on that. Uh, Avinash, you're doing great things and uh, keep being self-aware and uh, keep helping uh, others who are in this space as well, because culture of comparison is going to keep happening. You know, we, we have to live with technology. We have to live with social media. Uh, it's a competitive lifestyle and uh, to self-motivate, um, to, to have the ability to be able to get offline and have real conversations with real people and, um, you know, to learn their personality. And you're so right, you know, you just make judgments on people on how they look. And that's not who they really are. I mean, there's more to a person than just how they appear to be. So well done. And thank you, Abhinash. And thank you for the interview as well in the book. It's very interesting. And I hope people will read it. And thank you today for sharing so much. So God bless you. No, thank you so much for your time, Shoba. And um, I honestly... I, I do recommend this book to people because even though I feel like I'm quite aware now and I've come a long way, this book is opening my eyes to things that, you know, I don't think about on a day to day. And uh, there's a lot of lessons that I've learned already from the first 52 pages I've read that wow. I do want to incorporate. Uh, so I, I highly recommend this book to people my age, people older and people younger as well. Thank you. Thank you, Avinash. Wonderful. Anyway, thank you, Shoba, for your time. Thank you. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Wait. <laughs>